Vegas Hard Parking brought to you by Right Honda and Right Toyota out of Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm your host, Jay Finney, recording from my home studio in Gilbert, Arizona. First off, happy birthday, Dennis. Happy birthday, Fish. Two of my Patreons and dear friends support the show. Well, in the latest chapter of social media and the internet being undefeated, Hawk Tua has a new chapter. According to this report by the Tippa County Tribune, 23-year-old Haley Wellington, Miss Hawk Tua herself, has been informed by her employer that she no longer has a job. She was a preschool teacher, and apparently the kids were all showing up with Hawk Tua, and the parents were a little disgusted over it. And so that entire article is 100% satirical and fake. But I think the reality is it's been a long time since we've seen someone lose their job over social media. Keep that hot Tua spirit alive. But again, be careful what you say out there. It could come back to haunt you. I'm just glad that in my day, we didn't have anything like that. Because who knows where I would be today. Heaven forbid the stuff I did would have been caught on video. For over a decade, Four Wheel Online has been bringing the best truck accessories and truck parts to enhance the appearance and performance of all trucks and SUVs. They are dedicated to providing an extensive range of upgrades that will match any maker model on the road. The truck products cover everything to give your truck a custom look and added functionality. Need a wheel and tire package? Head over and use the configuration tool. They carry all the major brands of wheels and tires, so go get outfitted today. Visit them online at Four Wheel Online. So this last week I'd asked about bringing back the QA. I asked about it on hard parking violations, uh, the hard parking channel on Instagram and posted it to my Instagram story. So I have a few questions for you guys that's going to be coming up. So temporarily, at least the return of the Q and a section, wanted to update you a little bit on cars. So I finally, I finally gave my Honda Z its first oil change. Mind you, I've had this thing for what, four or five months now. Haven't had a lot of time to monkey with it. And I'll be honest with you, I've been a little hesitant to work on it because the car is so small, it's so low, I don't readily have access to a lift. And it has an OEM aero kit on it. So it has OEM ground effects. I don't think anyone uses the word ground effects anymore. Just aero kit. So it has an OEM aero kit and it's really low. And the thing is, it's a mid-engine SUV and it's really small. And so you have to find a way to get underneath the car. And also, one of the other things was pulling the plug, the purchase plug, on the correct oil filter. Since it's a Japanese car, never offered in the United States, there's no reference for it online. There's probably other vehicles that use the same filter. There has to be 100%, but finding out what that vehicle is can be a challenge. And you don't want to obviously buy the wrong oil filter because it's going to need to fit. At least it's not my main car, so it could afford to sit around for a while. But I ordered a filter specifically for the car. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, I, I forgot, mini trucks online or something. And I go, oh, wow, this thing's $12. Cool, because everybody else wants $30 or $40 for it, for an oil filter. Really? So I put it in my cart, I hit checkout, and lo and behold, it was coming from Australia, and I still had to pay $45 for shipping. So I was $60 into the stupid oil filter. The car's been running kind of rough since I got it. I think I'd said that before, but just to kind of catch some of you guys up that are listening for the first time or haven't listened in a long time, it's a little K truck. It's a Honda Z imported from Japan. No, I didn't import it myself. Somebody else imported it, but this is the first registration in the United States when I registered it. So it's had issues from day one. And I put some fuel cleaner in there and then it ran like a champ for a while. And after that was gone, Every subsequent tank of gas, I think I'm only on my third tank of gas now, and I've had the thing for four or five months. So I decided to change oil finally. I knew the NSX was coming out of the shop from warranty, and I just had to figure it out. I jacked it up a little bit, got underneath there, very difficult to do. Put the drain pan underneath for the oil, popped the 17 millimeter bolt, it drained. And I looked at it and I go, huh, that's not a lot of oil. The engine holds three quarts, about three quarts. 2.5 liters, something like that. And so when I drained it, it didn't drain for very long. So then I jacked it up a little bit more to kind of, you know, tilt it to get some more of it out of it. I was very suspect. I took the filter off, swapped that out, and put obviously the drain plug back in. And then I was, out of curiosity, I opened up the three quarts that I bought, poured one of them in there. Good. And first off, the way the engine is, 
getting access to pouring the oil in is very difficult. It's, it's it's hard to explain. You just have to trust me on this. This is not like your typical car. You have to access the engine cover in the back seat, underneath the back seat of this SUV. It's only two doors too, so it's not like you can open up the back door and do that. But it was at an angle. So I looked around the garage. I didn't feel like going out and trying to find an angled funnel. The regular funnel wasn't going to work. I change oil so infrequently, it's got to be worth my money. So I just thought about it. Maybe I have a bottle laying around. Maybe I have like an empty water bottle. No, I remember I crushed the empty water bottle the other day. I have to have something else that I could put in an angle. And then I remembered I had extra PVC. 90 degree elbows, one inch PVC pipe. I took out my PVC cutter and I cut a funnel. I made a funnel out of it. A weird funnel. But I put the first cord in there. And then I got curious. I go, okay, well, let's see how much oil actually came out of the car. Because there's no way there was three cords in there. I probably could have fit all the oil that came out of the Honda into one of those things. It might have been at the very top. I didn't want to risk it. So I poured the rest of it in the second one. So that's why my freaking car kept dying every five seconds because it was running on less than half of its oil. I would say about 35% of the oil that should have been in the car. That's all that was in the car was about 35% of the oil. Got my oil change done. It's been running like a champ. I need to buy new plugs and wire. Ordered a bunch of them online. I have four or five books that I've ordered for this thing online. All in Japanese. I use the translator app to look up parts. But one of the books is, it's a full 100% parts book with the diagram. It's awesome. So I just placed this big order. I had mentioned getting that I was going to get the NSX back, so I did pick it up. So I was in the RDX, and I was on the way to the Acura dealership, and I was behind an Integra. And that reminded me. Back when I dropped the NSX off, I had an option. They go, well, we have an RDX, or we have an Integra. Which one do you want? And at first, I was thinking, oh, I want the Integra. But then I remembered, unless this thing is a Type S, I don't want it. Because I've never read or heard anything good about the current gen Acura Integras unless it's a Type S, which I know is a really neat car. It's a fast car. It's a fun car for what it is. And so that's why I picked the RDX. And I didn't feel guilty about it because I knew, having had an RDX before as a loner, that it was going to be a lot of fun. I could run errands in it. If I had to go to the store and pack it full of stuff, I could. I didn't need to. I had the Infinity at home. We had my wife's MDX at home. But just saying, it was actually a lot more fun. And I knew the Integra wouldn't have been nearly as fun. So I'm going to talk about this again. You guys know that every once in a while I bring up the All In podcast. So this last week... And I was kind of hesitant to do it, but I did it anyway. And I did it to prove a point. They interviewed Donald Trump. And I think I've said this before. They've had half a dozen presidential candidates on the show. I love it when they do that. And I don't talk politics ever unless it's on this podcast about that show. That's it. Now, if I have a guest in here and they want to bring up a political question, I'm not an expert, but sure, we could talk about stuff because at the end of the day, I, just like you, the listener, am a real person, and we should have our own opinions on things and draw our own conclusions based on data that we receive. If you only look at one set of data, you can't judge it against the second set of data if you haven't seen the other set of data. And that's the type of show it can be when they have a presidential candidate on there. And so they had Trump on there. And on social media, I posted it. Excellent episode. This is my favorite podcast. And they interviewed 45. President 45, Donald Trump. And people hearted it. And I know that the people, most of the people who loved what I posted, they're diehard Trump supporters. I don't want to call them Trumpers, because that's almost negative these days. But some of them are Trumpers, and some of them I just know are Trump supporters. I don't support Donald Trump. I don't not support Donald Trump. I wanted to listen to him on there because these guys bring the best out of their guests, and it's always unscripted. And a lot of the stuff he said was really good. Sure, I'm sure it was campaign talk. Why would it not have been? But I say all that to say that there were people who were in my DMs and were kind of questioning or laughing or put basically an emoji where they were a little uneasy that I had posted it. And like my wife, they were so diehard anti-Trump, it wouldn't have mattered what he would have said. And... 
unless someone has done something personal to you or your family, you can't, here's the deal. And this is, again, this is kind of going back to the root of all this. You can't always trust everything you hear on social media, all the news outlets. I'm not anti-CNN, MSNBC. I'm not Fox News. I'm not anti any of that stuff. But when it comes to certain things, there's always a, an agenda behind it. So your, fam- your favorite news anchors, if they always lean more to one side or more to the other side, that's the agenda there. Or that's their bosses telling them what to do. On this other podcast I listen to, no one's telling them what to do. No one can tell them what to do. And so that's why I listen to it. So I would say embrace the discussion. Always listen to what somebody else has to say. There's one or two people on that panel that, I don't know, I sound like a pro-Trump guy here. There's one or two people on that panel that are very open about not liking him at all. But they have admitted that there's things that he did back when he was in office that he was actually right on and they were wrong on. And one thing I used to say when people would ask me when Trump was in office, what do you think about Donald Trump? You think he's the worst president we've ever had? And I go, I think history is going to decide who the best and worst presidents are. We can't decide in the moment unless they just do something entirely egregious like drop a nuke or allow us to have a nuke dropped on us. Other than that, history is going to decide whether whoever our current, future, three presidents from now, whoever they are and what they do, history will decide if they're any good. It's up to you and me. It's up to us to be informed since this is an election year and make our best judgment based on what we have found out or what we have watched during debates. And I don't watch presidential debates. I think I watch one or two a year, uh, every, every term, but I don't sit there and watch the 20 that they've had in the last year, I haven't, I don't have time to watch that. I don't have any interest to watch that. I listen to the recaps. I listen to them when they talk about them from people that don't have agendas. But, um, yeah, I would just say to all of you, whether you love that or hate that or refuse to even take a look at that, it's okay. But I am always going to take a look at that and listen to that because it makes me more informed not necessarily makes me want to change my mind about anything, but what it does is lets me know what somebody else's viewpoint is. And then at that point, what do you do with that information? You can use it to may have a better, a more informed opinion about something, or you can say we can agree to disagree, but at least I know exactly where you stand and I listened to it. I didn't listen. My friend didn't tell me what was said. I checked it out for myself. God, this is sounding like a political podcast lately. I'm sorry. Let's get to the Q&A segment. So the nature of the Q&A segment is, is for me to pick what questions I'm going to answer, the ones that get submitted by you. But the kicker is you kind of have to listen to the podcast because the carrot on the end of the stick, which isn't a very big carrot, is if you listen, if I pick your question, if I answer your question. I'm going to mail you some podcast swag. Honestly, it really just means a coaster because I have hundreds of them and they're really cool. But what I think is going on for a lot of people, and this is kind of why I stopped doing it before is one or two people ask 30 questions. They don't want the coaster anyway, or you get a couple dozen people that ask all sorts of crazy questions and they don't even listen to the podcast. So the stuff that I'm going to talk about these questions that I'm going to answer, unless you reach out to me and say, Hey, I heard my question on your podcast. I'm not sending you shit. Mr. Harrell thoughts on the, well, this is for Mr. Harrell thoughts on the new Bugatti and the innovation. This isn't even a question thoughts on the new Bugatti. Unless it's, do you have thoughts? Okay. Let me rephrase this. Jay, what are your thoughts on the new Bugatti and the innovation they have included in their hybrid powertrain? My thoughts on the new Bugatti is I don't really have any. I've seen a few clips of it. I don't think I've watched more than five seconds of any of those clips. I do believe I saw the, I never say this right. Is it Turbulon? 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 There's something in there that reminds me of the watches, the really cool watches. That's super cool. 
And from what I understand, there's a there's a ton of technology. I'm in this group called Apex on Facebook, and there's over 40,000 members in this group. And even with that, there's it's so policed and so tied down. I don't post in there because I don't ever have anything good enough to post. And they're very picky about the quality of the post. But that was posted, and so I paid attention to it a little bit. And it looks kind of like the prior one, and I never say it right, Chiron, 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 C-H-I-R-O-N. It looks kind of like that, but cooler. And unfortunately, that's really all I can offer you all because I haven't really looked into it. I don't really look into hypercars. I don't really care about hypercars. I think they look cool, and that's about it. So my opinion is it looks cool. Slow Turbo. Over the years of podcasting, what are three favorites and three bloopers? You know, I read this when he asked it, and I don't have an answer for it then, and I don't think I have an answer for it now. You don't really get to hear the bloopers on here because I edit my podcasts. Some of that stuff is on the Patreon. Actually, a lot of it is on the Patreon, but as I get more polished and better at doing this than the bloopers are fewer on my end than they are on the end of my guests, whether it's technical issue or something else crazy happens. I know one thing a few years ago I was recording in here. My brother-in-law was in town from Michigan. My other brother-in-law who lives down the street was in here and then in their brothers and I was interviewing them and my mother-in-law famous mother-in-law is yelling from down the stairs. Now we have the door closed, but she's still yelling. She comes all the way up the steps. We're in the middle of the phone conversation and she opens the door and asks us if we need something to eat. Recording. I'm recording. The recording light's on. We're in front of the microphones and I just kind of look over at her. I'm like, no, Ma, we're we're recording. Oh, 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 sorry. You know, stuff like that happens, but it's been a while. You know, I guess one of my favorite things is... A lot of people, when we have these conversations, when we have these interviews, they, I don't know if they're uptight, I don't know if they're just trying to be politically correct, especially the more famous the person, the less you can actually get out of them because they have to talk from a protected space. Think about the beginning of this podcast. Think about Haley, the 23-year-old preschool teacher who just lost her job, Miss Haktua. So nobody wants to be that. And I don't, I don't ask questions and try to trap people and put them in positions where it could ever come back to them because of something they said on a podcast, on my podcast, or anything that had to do with me social media wise. So what happens is when I get done recording, I'm like, all right, we're done recording. And then the conversation shifts. And a lot of the conversations I've had before and after I'm recording, I'm not saying that they're necessarily better than what we talked about, but they're just more personable and fun. Hell, I had Cody Walker on a few years ago, and we talked about mother-in-laws, and we talked about putting together closet systems and how we don't want to do those closet systems that you buy at Home Depot or Ikea. Like We'd rather pay someone to do it, but we still do it because we have to do it. But that was fun, and that's the type of stuff I want to pull out of my guests. You know, we have the car talk, and if you're a guest and you're about you're you're talking about your car because that's the reason why you're on the podcast, that's one thing. But I don't want to sit here and say the new hell, the new Bugatti is out and it's got 22 by 10 and a half inch wheels on these unique Michelin run flat tires that cost seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars a piece. The paint is a $88,000 paint with net. See, that's boring. No one cares about that. You just don't care. So you didn't get your three bloopers or your three favorites, but that's my answer. King fees, naturally aspirated or boost. I hate car questions. This is why no one submits questions because I don't have answers to these. So naturally aspirated or boost pro charger or supercharger. Here's the deal. I think it depends on your application. If money's not an object, In my opinion, the best thing you could do is a full naturally aspirated build on your car. So for you non-car people, what that means is it's taking everything that's already in your car for the most part and making it more efficient. So you do port and polish heads. So that's your headers and your, the thing that hooks to the, (laughs) that connects to the headers. You take all that stuff off, you take it to a machine shop, they clean it and they make it, they make the holes a little bigger. They smooth it out, optimal airflow. 
Um, you get a retune on your car and the, the bang for your buck is not there. So for instance, on my old NSX, if money weren't an object, I would have just done a full naturally aspirated build on it. And it would have went from 290 horsepower, probably up to 380 horsepower at the crank, not at the wheel. And it would have ran, it would have been louder and essentially bulletproof. People go to boost because it's faster. It's instant. Back in the day, if you put a turbo on your car, you were always rolling the dice. You're going to blow your motor. I blew my motor on my old Integra. I'm not the one who installed it, but that was 20 years ago, 24 years ago, 25 years ago. Turbos are safer now. Never had an issue on my NSX. Once I turboed it, I would rather turbo it. But again, it depends on the application. Pro Charger and Supercharger, I don't know what a Pro Charger is. I thought a Pro Charger was a Supercharger. Anytime I see it, it's directly... I always hear Pro Chargers on things like Mustangs, maybe Camaros. So I think it's an American car thing. You can put a Supercharger on anything. So when it came down to the NSX, Supercharger or Turbo? Turbo all day. Supercharger is always putting constant strain on your engine. It's linear, so you don't have to... You don't have yeah, you don't have to wait for the boost to spool up, but I had a small turbo on my old NSX, and so it was basically, it was almost immediate like a supercharger. So, Natchez aspirated, boost, pro charger, or supercharger, I would say boost first, supercharger second, Natchez aspirated third, and pro charger fourth, although all you people who actually know what that can do, you'd probably say pro charger all day over all the rest of those options. Um, one of my former guests on here, Nick, I think he had a pro charge Mustang. So I don't know. Again, I don't know the difference, but he had a pro charge Mustang and he walked, he walked my old NSX. It wasn't, and I knew he was going to, we were on the high, we were on the highway doing some illegal stuff late at night. No one else was on there straight away. And we got next to each other and I go, well, let me just see, let me just see. And I think we took off from like 60 and he was gone and I laughed and he didn't go that far ahead of me because there was no need we were just toying around but if you put the pro charger on the right application I guess you could say that about all these options then you're gonna kick someone's ass JDM fatty are JDM cars overrated especially now that we're getting a big flux of imports this is something I would love to ask a future guest and so I'm gonna answer this now but I'm gonna keep it on record I think one thing actually has nothing to do with the other, the way the question is phrased. Are JDM cars overrated, especially now that we're getting a big flux of imports? So I think what he's asking is, is a right-hand drive car, like my Honda K car, overrated now that everybody's importing these cars because of the 25-year rule? I think that's what the actual question is. Because a JDM car... And big flux of imports, hell, there's probably 80% of imports on the road right now of all years. Toyota Camry's an import, right? Your Lexus, your BMW, your Mercedes, your Porsches, those are all imports. So he's got to be talking about these old K cars. And I would say that in order to be overrated, you would have had to have had high praise. There's no high praise for that thing I have in the garage. It's just a cute car and I love it and it's fun. I think it's not highly rated or underrated. Now, if you look at things like a right-hand drive Toyota Supra, I've always thought those were overrated because it's a Toyota Supra. And there's no benefit of having a right-hand drive of anything if there's a left-hand drive option. Case in point, the old NSX that I had, I would drive a left-hand drive all day because that's U.S. domestic market. Right-hand drive is Japanese. No difference. So, and, and it's a gray area. They're called gray area cars, gray market cars, because you can't put a real value on them because they were never sold in the United States. But when you take a look at things like the R33 and the R32 Skylines, the Fast and Furious Skylines, the R30, R34s, they're cool. They're awesome to look at. And I'm never going to say they're underrated, and I'm never going to say they're overrated. I think that their rating is a direct result of the inability to get to them and the awesome speed they can have and video games and movies have a lot to play with that. So if I look outside and there's 
if if I have to look, if I'm at a traffic light and three out of four cars are R33 Skylines, sure, it kind of sucks because it's a unique car because they didn't sell them here. But that doesn't make it overrated or underrated. There's a reason why I have that Honda Z in the garage and I don't have a Honda Acti truck or van or a Subaru Sandbar or a Hatsu truck or anything else because I wanted something that is, I wouldn't say nobody else has, but those are extremely rare. And they're only rare because they're a 98 and we haven't been able to import them for very long. And everybody knows the Actis, nobody knows the Honda Z. So if I get to a stoplight and there's four Honda Zs there, I'm not going to be upset about it. I'm going to probably flash all of them and say, hey, let's go take a, let's go do a photo shoot. Uh, but I don't think, I don't think the influx of imports has anything to do with whether a car is overrated or underrated. Red, friend of the show, old friend of the show, Red Goodman hasn't been on in a long time, but he always posts the, the super crazy old vintage car stories on Hard Parker Violations. And he's also notoriously known for submitting like 50 questions. This time he kept it to one. Very good. Good job by you, Red. Probably won't even listen to this. Is there any physical attribute or trick? And this is a good one I could say for a guest as well. Is there any physical attribute or trick you could see others doing that you wish you could do? For example, I can't roll my R's at all, and I'm incredibly jealous of those who can. Um, you know, I think physically, I know there's a lot of mental things I wish I could do that others can like the mind of this person or that person. Cause my brain is so scattered. I don't have certain things that I wish I had, but the fun, the more fun exercise is what's one attribute you can get, but you have to give something up. And that's the thing. You know, I wish I was, I, I've said, I wish I, I could program computers really well. I could get a really good job, but if that meant that I lost my sense of art, my artistic skills, you know, what, who knows, right? So it's got to be the fair exchange. Physical attribute or trick. I guess I wish I was athletically gifted. I would have liked to have tried to play sports or at least recreationally wise, you know, like my body didn't break down as much. My knees, every time I walk down the steps in my own house, every time, every time you can hear my knees crack. And I know that's going to screw me one day soon. Now, when I drive long distances, I don't have to drive that far. If I'm, if I'm in the car for more than two hours, my knee starts to hurt. When I'm on a plane, that's the reason why I sit, uh, I don't, I can't sit the aisle because my shoulders are so big, but I always sit on the window seat so that I can shuffle my bag around and then, you know, I just have more room to like throw my leg out in front of me. And then I have to pull the backpack up and then switch legs and then throw the other leg out. And so I wish that I was a little bit more physically gifted. Last question comes from sarcastically. When can I be on LOL? That's when you could be on. And that's the Q&A. Hey. I guess this is another one of my zany episodes that don't seem to really be doing much, but me kind of mumbling and bumbling and talk about insignificant stuff. But it's my podcast. I can do it. You know, I was at the coffee shop. Coffee shop. Are they coffee shops? They're coffee shops. Now I ordered a giant cinnamon roll that was a little hard. It was a little weird. But the thing is, they served it with... A wooden spoon, wait, they served it with a wooden fork and a wooden knife. And as terrible as that sounds, it's even more terrible. They are 75% useless. And I say 75 instead of 100 because I was still able to use the fork as a fork somewhat. And the knife wasn't very knifey. Like, it sucked. It sucked. And the fact that stuff like this exists, I know we're trying to save the world, save the planet... Stop with the plastics, which by the way, there's nothing you can do about plastic. It's everywhere. It is literally in the air. This is a fact. Plastic is everywhere. I know I talked about it before a little bit, but I recently learned that it is literally everywhere because we use it on everything and there's nothing you can do to avoid plastic. In fact, Wendy's Nuggets 
Wendy's Nuggets have some of the highest content of plastics of all the foods that you can consume fast food. Wendy's Nuggets. Everything has plastic. Everything. Anyway, recently had a comedian reach out to me on social media. I've gone to this person's show before. And they used to have a TV show, and now they tour around and having a, and they're having a, the time of their lives. And they said, hey, I want to be on your podcast. So I'm going to work on trying to get that scheduled. And so I'll know, and then you'll know once they're on the show. Because obviously we have a history of people that want to be on the show, but just don't show up to the show. So with that being said, I want to thank Right Honda and Right Toyota, FoilOnline.com, Cell Shop Wireless Services, Auto Cannon, officially licensed Honda and Acura gear. Patreon business supporter, Kui Automotive out of Winter Garden, Florida. Automotive specialty tool out of Owings Mills, Maryland. Bell Construction out of Caledonia, Michigan. That's Dennis, birthday boy. Beak House Small Home Design, Ashbury, Virginia, Traverse City, Michigan. That's Fish, birthday boy. Shaping Success with West Tinkersley out of Boise, Idaho. You can listen to us on One Drink Wednesday, every Wednesday, 7 o'clock Pacific time on the TikTok machine and the Instagram. Shout out to Mark Stoneman, Catherine Cox, City Ramos, Richard Graves, Byron Jones, Bo Jung, Alex Kamina, Drew Bunkley, and Yasser Chiba. Email the show, heartparkingpodcast at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram at jfinning. Join the Heart Park and Violations Facebook group. Join the Heart Park and Violations channels. Get your questions in. I can't grow that you tell the world how great this show is. Let's do this. Let's grow this thing together. And I'll talk to you all next week. Finally got around to trying that Arby's Wagyu burger. It was all right. I didn't like the little dressing shit they put on it. Shut up!